The following audio presentation is a production of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, in association with the Division of Continuing Studies and the Institute on Ethnicity, Culture, and the Modern Experience. This production was originally funded by the New Jersey Historical Commission and has been remastered by the Rutgers ITV Studio. Counting the cars on the New Jersey Turnpike may have been idle recreation for Simon and Garfunkel, but it's serious business for the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. Every day, nearly 600,000 cars, trucks, and buses travel along the Turnpike, flowing like an artery through the heart of New Jersey from Delaware Bay to the Hudson River. And as the nation's oldest and busiest superhighway now heads into its 50th year of operation, it's safe to say that it's left an indelible mark on the geographic, economic, cultural, and social landscape of the Garden State. The dominant image of the New Jersey Turnpike is a masculine image. It's one of uh, industry, uh, prosperity, uh, activity. It's kind of a macho disregard for the niceties. Uh, there are no landscapes. There's no vegetation. It's just raw industrial might. That's Rutgers University professor Angus Cress Gillespie, who, along with fellow professor Michael Aaron Rockland, wrote the definitive book on the subject. It's called Looking for America on the New Jersey Turnpike. What Rockland found, much like the macho image described by Gillespie, was a patch of scenery that lay somewhere between heaven and hell. And when you get near the airport and you got the turnpike, and the airport, and the Conrail train yards, and Port Newark, all there. It looks like some kind of a sixth grade geography lesson on right. transportation. <laughs> it is a fantastic, and, the, and then the fires from the refineries. It is something either magnificent or hellish. Take your pick. To understand what the turnpike means to New Jersey, you have to go back to its origins. There was no interstate highway system. There was no transportation plan for the Northeast Corridor. There was only an idea, and a dream, in one man's mind. If the Turnpike had a father, he was Alfred E. Driscoll, an extremely effective politician. He was a strong Republican governor who enjoyed the support of a Republican legislature. In his first inaugural address to the legislature on January 21, 1947, Driscoll launched his plan for the Turnpike. Within three years, ground was broken, and a remarkable feat of engineering was about to unfold. The turnpike was built mostly by World War II veterans, and these were no-nonsense guys who had a job to do and they did it. Uh, the way the turnpike was built, it was divided into a number of sections. They didn't just build it from north to south or from south to north, they built the whole thing simultaneously. The entire turnpike was built in less than 18 months. Today, you can't even build a jug handle in 18 months. Nancy Becker, vice chair of the Turnpike Authority. I had the privilege of meeting Governor Driscoll's son within the past year, and he explained to me what it was like as a child uh, growing up when his father was so committed to building the Turnpike. It was, by all accounts, an interesting experience. Every weekend, Governor Driscoll would take his children in the car to see how far the turnpike had progressed that week. And frequently, they would get stuck in the mud and have to be pulled out and then uh, driven home. Today, of course, drivers are less likely to get stuck in the mud than to get stuck in traffic. Running as it does between two of America's major metropolitan centers, the turnpike attracts one of the heaviest volumes of vehicular traffic in the world. The main function of the New Jersey turnpike is to link New York with Philadelphia. Now, it's perfectly true, as everyone knows, uh, that if you, start, if you start at the George Washington Bridge, exit 18, and you go south, there's no law that says you have to get off at exit 4 and go on into Philadelphia. But the fact of the matter is, that's what most people do. In between the two ends of the turnpike lie a dozen of its most popular features. Its service areas, 
named for such distinguished New Jerseyans as Thomas Edison, Clara Barton, Grover Cleveland, Molly Pitcher, and Alexander Hamilton. But at one of those service areas, Michael Rockland came upon a waitress who gave him a whole new perspective, not only on the turnpike, but on New Jersey history. I asked her uh, if she knew who Walt Whitman was, and she said, who? And I said, Walt Whitman, who's he? That's what we're asking you. Do you know who Walt Whitman was? Never heard of him. What do you mean you've never heard of him? Of course you've heard of him. You've been working here a year, and this is the Walt Whitman rest area. It is? This encounter led Gillespie and Rockland to the reluctant conclusion that the New Jersey Turnpike service areas would never be mistaken for instruments of education. There's nothing in, or was nothing in that rest area to indicate it was Walt Whitman. In fact, if you went into the, the uh, Roy Rogers, there was a picture of somebody in there, and you have generations of kids growing up thinking that Roy Rogers is Walt Whitman. <laughs> There's something about the New Jersey Turnpike that makes it a rich source of humor, and derision, and anger, and pathos. But deep down, it's also a source of pride a highway that may not be beautiful from start to finish, but manages to move an extraordinary number of people and goods and services along its 148 miles with a record of efficiency, safety, and innovation that is second to none. And the next 50 years promise more of the same. We are in the process now at the Turnpike of installing electronic tolls along the whole system and in all the toll roads in New Jersey. Part of that contract requires the installation of a fiber optic cable under the turnpike. Fiber optics are the road of the future, the telecommunications future of the state and the nation. The New Jersey Turnpike. It's not just another highway. I'm Rick Sending for New Jersey Times. And I don't know why Counting the cars on the New Jersey Turnpike, they've all